Today, uh, we wanted to look at uh, Lalita Sakhi. So we've spent a um, few seminars just uh, gathering some knowledge, information about Shimati Radharani. So now we wanted to do the same uh, with the gopis, especially the principal eight gopis, Astasakis, around uh, Radha, and, Radha and Krishna. So Lalita, this is a verse by... Um, so this is from the Prema Bhakti Chandika, verse 51. Samasneha vishamasneha na karo ho duhi leha kohi mata dika sneha gana nirantara takhe sange krishna katha lila range narma sakhi e sab jana Translation, equal affection for Radha and Krishna or more affection for Krishna than for Sri Radha. Do not become attached to that. I'll just speak about preference for Sri Radha. They are always in her company, blissfully telling her about Krishna. They are all called Narmasakis. Interesting verse. And um, it's this, uh, Narutam Dasaka is describing the different type of gopis or manjaris or sakis. Uh, some of them have equal affection for Radha and Krishna, some more affection for Krishna than for Radha. But the, he is going to focus on those gopis who have more affection for Radha over Krishna. But who are they talking about to Radha? Krishna. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, very interesting. So who are these eight Parama Prashta Sakis? Eight principal gopis. Lalita is Top with Vishaka, both of them. And when we go to the altar in um, Bandavan Dham, Iskon altar, we have Radha Krishna, Radha Shamsa, and Lalita Vishaka. So very important, they're on the altar. Champaklata, Chitra, Tunga Vidya. So, and when we go to Mayapur, we have the all Asta Sakis are there. And all of these are there, all these wonderful gopis, Induleka, Aranga Devi, Sudevi. Details about the Sakis are given by Rupa Goswami in his Sri Radha Krishna Ganodesh Dipika, mentioning their names, dresses, nature, and activities. The gopis were not ordinary women. In essence, they are on an equal level with Krishna. So we often say that we can't <clears throat> we can't uh, be on an equal level to Krishna. Right? We, those who want to become equal level to Krishna, they want to merge with Krishna, which is really not a good thing to do. And same with the gopis. We can't say we're one of the gopis. Actually, gopis are these, especially these astasakis, are on an equal level to Krishna. Same platform. So they are eternal associates. We can never say we are gopis. For example, we're servants of the gopis. Yes, we're aspiring servants. As confirmed in the Brahma Sami, they, they are expansions of the pleasure potency of Krishna. And his, his potency, they are non-different from him. So they have a unique position. Same with Yashoda Mayanand Maharaj. They are, they are on the equal level to Krishna. So here we go. This is the altar on, in uh, Mayapur. So Radha Madha, then we go on this side Lalita, on this side Vishaka. And Induleka, Rangadevi Sudevi. And then we go Tung, Champakalata, Chitra, and in the easiest way I remember these names, this uh, next to V is going to be IRS. IRS is like the Internal Revenue Service or something like that. Indian, Sorry? Indian Revenue Service. Indian Revenue Service, even IRR, IRS. So I remember that. And then this uh, going this way is TCC. So that way it's quite easy to remember the names. Okay. So this is from Sri Gandava Samprath Nastakam. This is praise to Queen of Goddesses Srimati Radharani by Raghunath Das Goswami. 
महादेवी कखुबरा गगाचे अश्या प्रसाद Wonderful prayer to have. Um, we often have been discussing recently about how it's important to seek the blessings, or rather, to get the mercy of Krishna. Well, to seek the blessings of Radha, we have to actually seek the blessings of um, her associates, and chief amongst the associates is Lalita. So if we aspire to be the servant of the servant of the servant of her servants, then we are placing ourselves in a very good position to get the service of Radha and Krishna. Especially when we have this mood of humility, then, then anything is possible. So we sang the Lalita Astakam, beautifully sung by Karuna. Thank you so much. This is Lalita in uh, Mayapur. Sri Lalita is regarded as the greatest of all eight Sakis. She's 27 days older than Radha, Radharani and is Radharani's constant companion. 27 days. She's also known as Anuradha. Eternally, 14 years, 8 months and 27 days. Hmm. So Radharani is 14 years and 8 months. I think. She's decorated with the Vaman Pakhar Harsh stood up nature. <laughs> her bodily complexion is that of bright yellow, Gorachiran, and her dress is like peacock feathers. Her mother's name is Sharadi, her father's Vishwoka. Her husband is a cowherd named Bhairav, a friend of Govardhan Mala, husband of Chandravali. So you can see there's pretty hot stuff going on in that family. Mm -hmm. She's a leader of all the Radharani's girlfriends. And all of the feelings of pastimes of the divine pair are under her control. Mm. She's expert in causing loving quarrel and in making a truce. During Vigra quarrel, uh, Proudi uh, Vada, proud words. Answers and rational arguments, she angrily lowers her head and is concealed by the luster of the Sakis. So she is uh, <clears throat> not only good at causing a quarrel, but also making the truce. Because the quarrel is enjoyable by the divine couple, but then the making of the making up is even more enjoyable. When the divine pair get into a loving quarrel, she gives the Sakis presence of mind and enthusiastically coordinates the quarrel. Then when the time has come for Radha Krishna's reconciliation or meeting, she may go there, but she will stay there as if indifferent. <laughs> Very expert. She's expert in making floral ornaments, umbrellas, beds, grove, cottage, constructions. She's learned in conjuring tricks and composing riddles. Her service is making beetle leaves with kalpa. A kunj is named Lalita Nandan Kunj. In her yukta, there, there are sakis like Ratna Kireka or Ratna Prabha, Rattikala, Shubhadra, Chandra Rekika or Badra Rekika, Sukhumuki, Danista, Kalahamsi, and Kalapini. Decorates, she decorates them, Radha Krishna, with flowers and decorates their cottage while they rest at night. In Ujjwala Nilamala, Mali, 
Sri Rupa Goswami writes that Lalita Devi is the deity of the love of Radha and Madhav. This is quite challenging to understand. But when Krishna comes, when Radha, when Radha expands from Krishna, there's a love that emanates from them. And that love is manifested as Lalita Devi. It's a personification of the love of Radha Madhav. So that's Lalita. So it's a very, very powerful position that she has got in the spirit in the spiritual context. She's very powerful. She knows how to please Radha and Krishna through different activities. She has the storehouse of Lila Shakti with her. She's the maintainer of Lila Shakti. Yoga Maya uh, Purnamasi follows her instructions. So She's not shy. She's not scared. She's not uh, in awe of Radha and Krishna. Uh, her position is one of taking charge. She's actually in charge because, because she's the love between Radha and Krishna. And love conquers all. Love conquers Krishna. Love even conquers Radha. And this is Lalita. So she's the boss. She's a real boss. In the spiritual world, Lalita conducts all the affairs, makes the quarrels, makes them make up. So she's got an exalted position in the spiritual world. Sometimes they are separated by circumstances, cannot meet with each other. When they meet in one place, then there are many different family members, such as parents, grandparents, in laws, and they cannot meet as their hearts desire. They have to be shy and separate from each other. After Lalita Devi accepts anything, Radha and Krishna will accept it. She has many messengers. They go throughout Braj, making sure everything is going on properly. In Braj Mandal, for the pleasure of Radha Mata, Lalita Devi is always engaged in different activities. There is Nayaka and Nayikya, a lover and a beloved. Sometimes they are separated by circumstance, cannot meet with each other. When they meet in one place, then there are many different family members. So we've been through that. They have to be shy. They act like children and act as if they do not have any relationship with each other. However, Lalita Devi arranges for Radha Madhav to meet together privately. And Lalita teaches Radha, Radhika. So we sort of uh, read this into the song that uh, was the bhajan that was sung. When Krishna comes, don't look at him. <laughs> She's teaching him. Show that you don't have any relationship with him. You don't like him even. And that you don't even know him or want to know him. Be smart and strong. Don't, don't, don't let anyone know that you have any relation with him. You should hide your love from him, for him. Don't show it to anyone. Don't open your heart. If you open your heart, your love will fly out. Keep it secret, keep it safe. <laughs> you should only discuss your love. With those who are your very near and dear friends, and also those friends who know your heart will help arrange the meeting between you and your beloved. Lalita teaches Radhika to be clever in her activities. There are many sakis, but Radhika's dear most friend is Lalita. She is Pakara, very strong. She's like a controller. She can instruct Radhika directly. Now she will say, Sit here. Don't go out. <laughs> Sometimes Radhika will have difficulty tolerating this. And she anxiously waits to see Krishna. She will think, no, hey, everyone is going to see Krishna, but I cannot go. Lalita Devi says, no, don't go. Sit here. <laughs> Radharani becomes restless and shivers, but she will not disobey Lalita's instructions. She will pace back and forth in the kunj and then sit down and get up and pace again. But she will not leave the kunj. Then Krishna is going out to the forest. Baladev is at the front with the calves and the sakhas. And then Krishna goes past. Krishna says, oh, I lost a calf. He tells his sakhas to go ahead with the calves. And he comes back. He jumps into the kunj and meets and speaks with Radharani. At that time, Lalita is not there. Nor is Vishaka, nor anyone. Everyone hides and only Radharani and Krishna alone. Krishna meets with her quickly and then runs back to the sakhas and his calves. Lalita arranges this program, inspires Krishna. 
Then Radharani is very happy. A little later, Lalita Devi comes and finds Radharani very pleased. If Radharani were to go in front of everyone to see Krishna, then they would not be able to meet. But Krishna secretly comes and Lalita arranges this meeting. Therefore, she's very dear to Radha Krishna. Once Radharani came to Giriraj Govardhan to sing and play on her veena and on another instrument, Lalita Devi arranges for these meetings in Govardhan in the Kunjas. She says, be silent, don't teach or tell Krishna anything. <laughs> you should hide here and practice your singing. Don't send news that we are here, otherwise Shyam will come. But Krishna smells their fragrance. He thinks, oh, a wonderful flower has blossomed in the garden of Govardhan. I will go there and meet with the gardener. I will collect some flowers and then I'll cool my body. Flowers have this power. When you wear flowers or keep them near you, you can feel cool and peaceful. Your mind and everything becomes clean. Nowadays, everybody is living in stone buildings and their hearts become like stone. Otherwise, Giriraj Govardhan is like a stone, but all over his body there are so many plants, trees, creepers, flowers growing. Externally strong, like, a, like Brahma, but really he's so soft and sweet. This is a fantastic example of the sweetness of Krishna. Let's just see how much there is. Okay, no, not too much. So, her special talents. She's a leader, the guru of all the sakis of Srimati Radhan. Very magnanimous, like her father, instigator of most pastimes. Always displays contrariness to Krishna's suggestions. She never agrees with him. <laughs> frequently becomes angry and speaks outrageously <laughs> insolent retorts to increase the intensity of loving affairs between Radha and Krishna. Brilliant in composing, understanding riddles. Unparalleled in fashioning things with flowers, including coins, uh, dance arenas, umbrellas, coaches, balls, expert in performing magic tricks and juggling. Rupa Manjari, so that's Rupa Goswami, is the follower of Lalita Devi. Thus all who consider themselves as Rupa Nuga Bhaktas, followers of Rupa Goswami are ultimately the servants of Lalita Devi. And thus through the Parampara should always be longing to engage in the service of her lotus feet. So the, one of the main servants of Lalita is Rupa Manjari. Mm. She gets all of the um, confidential service connected to Radha and Krishna when they meet alone. Even Lalita is not present at that time, but Rupa Manjari can be. Lalita Sakhi incarnates as Swarup Damudhar in the past time of Lord Gauranga Mahaprabhu and acted as his personal secretary. In fact, no one could approach or be present or present anything to Mahaprabhu without his sanction. She was born in the village of Karahala and later on her father brought her to Uchagaon, which is known as the place of her pastimes. There are still many remains of her living, having lived there, like a rock containing the imprints of her lotus feet. There are also imprints of some small utensils she used when she and the other Sakis fed Krishna when he would come to visit them. When the sun rays fall on the imprints of those uh, pots and pans that glitter and shine. All the sakis used to play with Krishna and Lalita in Uchakao. And there are many places that there where, where you can see their footprints to this day. On the northern petal of Ananga Shukada Kunja, there's a beautiful kunja covered with various kinds of flowers and trees. This place is known as Lalita Nandalda Kunja and is the color of lightning. This lovely Lalita Saki always lives there. She and Sri Krishna are very, very dear to each other. Okay? It's Lalita. Okay, so just a few more uh, things about Lalita Devi. I said she's hot-tempered, bold and fearless. And she can fight with Krishna and win the arguments. Um, <laughs> and in, in any philosophical discussions... Uh, Krishna always loses to her. So <laughs> it's saying that, you know, if you um, go down the line, you're like, uh, uh, you know, up the parampara, 
uh, even like uh, Brahma loses to um, uh, Saraswati Devi like that to Shiva and like and then all the way up to Krishna. So even Krishna uh, loses to uh, Lalita Devi. So no one could beat Lalita Devi in anything. Um, she also lives in Yavat, which is uh, also the home of um, Radharani uh, in-laws. So both the in-laws are in, in Yavat. And there's a lovely pastime that I came across, uh, which Lalita Devi is, is, and Radha and Krishna are part of. So this happened in the time of the Pitru Paksh, which is finished. Um, so in Pitru Paksh, no one is, it was, is allowed to go out of the house uh, because uh, you're supposed to be a grave, uh, not uh, performing any pujas or anything like that. And so Radharani was not allowed to go out uh, her mother-in-law would, would stop her. So at that time, Radharani remembered Lalita. And just by remembering Lalita Devi, uh, Lalita Devi uh, came to her, uh, her house. Lalita Devi asked her why she was so sad. So <clears throat> Radharani said, you know, I'm not allowed to meet Krishna for 15 days. And I can't really tolerate that. So Lalita Devi said, don't worry, I'll arrange something. So she went to meet Purnamasi. And... Um, she arranged with Purnamasi, uh, something uh, which we'll go into later. Then Lalita Devi came back and told um, Radharani's uh, mother-in-law and um, sister-in-law, Chitila and Kotila, that all the gopis um, are going out to worship. So they asked, okay, who, 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 what is this worship? So they said, that we, they have to worship Sandhya Devi, who is the wife of Surya Dev. And Jatila said that Sandhya Devi is always worshipped by men by chanting the Gayatri Mantra. She, she, she has never heard of uh, the ladies ever worshipping Sandhya Devi. So Lalita told Jatila that there's a special uh, ritual called Sangji, where the gopis are supposed to worship Sandhya Devi with flowers and coloured powders mm -hmm. and to decorate Sandhya Devi. And this will ensure the long life of the husband of the, uh, of the worshipper. So Jatila said that she's never heard of such a ritual. Um, so Lalita Devi said, okay, let's go and ask Purnamasi. So that is why uh, Lalita Devi had gone to Purnamasi to say, you know, we're going to uh, do, um, suggest this and you have to agree to everything. Um, so Lalita Devi said, let's go and um, talk to Purnamasi because Purnamasi knows everything about every, uh, any ritual and uh, worship. So we went to Purnamasi and Purnamasi said, yes, Lilita is right. So for 15 days, all the ladies have to do Rangoli and worship Sandhya Devi. And this should be done meticulously. So Chatila agreed because she wanted the long life of her son. So Chatila agreed. And then so Lalita Devi took Radharani to go in the Kund. So while they're collecting flowers, Lalita Devi told Radharani, that they should go to the other side because she could see some uh, blue flowers there. So the blue flowers was actually Krishna sleeping and he looked like a blue lotus uh, with his eyes closed. And so they went over there and they're picking, uh, looking at all the different other flowers. And then Radharani becomes happy because she can see Krishna. So tears start falling from her eyes and onto her feet. So she's just looking down at her feet, not at Krishna. So Krishna wakes up and asks Salita why they're there. So um, Lalita Devi said, we are, we're here to collect flowers. And Krishna says, no, you can't collect flowers. This uh, kunj belongs to me. Uh, who, who, who's given you the right to collect flowers? So they're arguing like this. All the, all the while, uh, Radharani is um, looking down at her feet. And in the tears, she could see the face of Krishna. So she's extremely happy because she, she, she's not actually looking at Krishna directly. So then Lalita Devi eventually says to Krishna that uh, there's a ritual called Sanji. And Krishna doesn't believe him. Uh, Krishna says that all the, you know, uh, all the beautiful damsels of Raj uh, who follow Sanji Sorry, Lalita Devi said all the uh, damsels of Raj follow Sanji. And Krishna says, well, there's only one beautiful person in all of Raj, and that is um, the daughter of um, Rishabhanu. 
So Lalita says, well, guess what? This this lady standing beside me is the daughter of Rishabhanu. So then Krishna says, okay, then why are you doing all the talking? Why is she not saying anything? So Lalita Devi said, well, she doesn't usually talk to anyone. Um, but eventually, you know, Krishna is joking with Radharani. And then uh, Krishna talks to Radharani. And Radharani is really happy to be listening, hearing Krishna. So this goes on for all the 15 days. And this, so now this festival uh, is celebrated uh, as Lalita Devi has instigated it in all of um, uh, northern uh, Bharat. But no one actually knows the real reason for this uh, festival. Mm-hmm. So in, this way, you know, Lalita Devi organizes very, very, lots of different um, pastimes for Radha and Krishna to meet. Okay. Lalita Devi. DJ. DJ. Any questions, any comments? Very interesting personality. Okay, Lalita Devi Kijay.